Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Lara Tips. In today's video, we'll be talking about dynamic relationship in Laravel. So by dynamic relationship, what I mean is we can create a relationship between two tables by using a column that actually doesn't exist on the table. So I'll show you that directly from coding. Now, if I go here in the VS code, I have users tables and I have logins table. So users table that is everything is same that by default comes with Laravel. And in the logins table, I have a user's ID as a foreign key here. And it also contains IP address and logged in at date field. And it means that a user can have many logins. And as you can see here, I haven't added here, created at and updated at timestamps field because we don't need that here. Yeah. And also if we do not need that, then in the logins model, we have to add this public IME stamps is equals to false because whenever we try to save something using a model the created ad and updated ad will be automatically filled by Laravel so just to tell Laravel that we don't have those fields here we have to save public timestamps equals to false and Laravel will not try to save them so we have these models and users model is also here and in the database I'll show you here in the users table I have five users and in the logins table I have all the login information of those users here some of the users have five logins some of them have six six logins and so on now in the browser here so, so this is coming from this home controller let me go here in the home controller yeah I have passed all the users to this welcome blade view and if we go here inside and here I am showing the header data and here I am simply looping through the users and showing the users name and email and all the date and IP address is not added here currently now what I want to show is here I only want to show the last login date and last login IP of the users and if we look here in the database a user can have multiple logins and from those logins I only want the last login date and last login IP so we can calculate this by using two approaches first of all we can use has one relationship yeah because has one relationship and has many relationship the table structure is always same and has one will on, always return one model so by using the has one relationship we can simply get the last related data that is one approach and the second approach is using sub queries so we'll be looking into both and i'll be showing you what are the disadvantages of using has one relationship and what are the advantages of using sub queries okay now let's see that in action Okay, now let's go to the users table here and let us define the has one relationship public function so last we can say last login here and we can simply return this has one and login class here yeah now if we do it like this then let's see what happens here okay now if I go here in the blade file so welcome so in the user model we have this last login relationship yeah now we can simply go ahead here and say user last login logged in at here and here we can simply say user last login IP now we'll be getting the users logged in at and the users IP now let's see what happens here now if I go here in the browser and refresh now you can see that we are getting the dates here but there is a problem if you go in the database and see here now for the users with the ID of one let's see the username here so it's Asa Cartwright and the, if we see here the first login time the first row in the database here 12716 so we are getting that 12716 so the has one relationship is get always getting the first row from the database here so for the users with the one we are getting the first row users with the id2 we are getting the first row if you see here 2006 310 so you are also getting that so it's not working so for that what we have to do is we have to go in the users model and here we have to write order by logged in at and it should be descending which means that we'll be only getting the latest logged in at and has one will always return one row now if we do that and if we come here in the browser and refresh the page now we are getting all the latest login of the user yeah now if i go here in the 
database let me sort by the users first and let me sort them by the latest date now the every first column in here will be the latest date here the word user with the id of one and user with the id of two will be the latest date now if i go here in and see here you can see here 1971 92 98 2012 2018 yeah so it is showing the latest date on the top so for the user with the id of one we are showing 2018 2.9 so it is showing the 2018 2.9 and ip address start with 170 and here also starts with 170 similarly for the user with the id of two we have ip address starting with the 117 yes the same and 2010 83 2010 83 and the data is matching yeah so yes we have just shown the latest login date and ip address of the user using has one relationship okay yeah we have shown that but now if we go ahead and see here in the query now we are getting some problem here we are getting n plus one query problem okay let's fix that because we know how to fix that by using either eager loading or lazy loading now let's go ahead here in the home controller and let us introduce the eager loading with and we will simply pass the relationship here last login it will look like this and if i go ahead here in the browser and refresh the page now you are seeing here that we are only getting two queries which means we are we have reduced the number of total number of queries from six to two but now there is still one more problem here now if we see here in the second query here yeah the, it is getting all the logins from that login table so if you see here in the login table we have here 31 rows and it is getting all the 31 rows from here because if you see the query properly it is saying select all from logins where user id is one two three four five yeah and we have uh, all the users in this table have are from one to five so it is getting all the logins and from that logins it is again finding the latest one so it is calculating that in php so which will be a little bit slower because every calculation that we perform in php will be a little bit slower than that of the database layer the database layer is very very fast so we should always try to calculate or do some calculations in the database layer now here we are hitting some performance issues let's say we had thousands of records in the logins table then it would fetch all those data and it will get the first one for every user so for a proof i can show you here it is hydrating 36 models here if you see here it is getting 31 logins models and it is getting five users models so you are you can see here the five users table from here from the users table and 31 records from the logins table i think you understood the problem here now let's see how to fix it so this is the problem when we use has one relationship now let's see by using the sub query now for that what we can do is let us simply remove this for now and what we want for now let us only calculate the last login date okay now for that what we can do is add add select it will add extra column in the users table now it will get all the columns that are in the users table and it will add some extra here so what we want is last login add yeah now what we can say is here so we can simply say from login table select logged in at okay let us also see here logged in at yeah select logged in at from login table where column you can say so in the login table we have this users id here so we can say user underscore id should match from this users table here yeah so you can say users dot id and we'll order by logged in at in the descending order and we'll get only one result from here so what i am doing here is i am getting the login at from the logins table where the user's id in the login login table should match the user id in the users field so i am basically mapping the users this user id with this users id here and i am only getting the 
one record and ordering that by the descending order by using logged in ad so which should give us the latest login ad data from here now if i do it like this then let me show you this in the tinker well okay if i run this sorry here is a typo so let me fix that here as well and if I run this code here, now you can see here, I am getting this last login ad as well. So let me just remove this here for now. Yeah, let me run this code. Now you can see here, I am simply getting all the columns in the users table. And if I add that here, and I am getting an extra column here, yeah, which is the last login ad. Now if we see here like this, so for the user with the ID of one, the last login date is 2018 to and if we see our previous record here that showed the correct result then we can see here for the user with the id of 1 we are showing 2018-29 so data is matching and for the user with the id of 2 2010-83 and you can see here 2010-83 so the data is matching now how can we show since we are getting this in the users model so we can simply access it as a property in the users model if i go here in the welcome.blade.php so let me for now comment this here and here I can simply say last login at like this yeah and if I go here in the browser and, and I refresh here now you can see here I am getting the results here yeah and if we see here in the queries table we are only running one query here and we are only hydrating five models so we are only getting the users that we want and we are not hydrating anything from the logins model so which should improve the performance of our application so from 31 rows from the logins and 5 rows means 36 rows being hydrated we are only hydrating 5 models here okay now we also want the last login ip here yeah so for that also what we can do is we can simply add another thing like this here and let's say last logged in ip and let me select the ip from here and order by so everything remains same so we are only getting the last login ip from here and we can simply show that here like this and if i go here in the browser and refresh the page now you can see the ip addresses as well yeah so if you see here so the logics are being repeated here yeah so let's say there is other columns in the that logins table then for every columns we don't want to run this extra sub queries for each one so yeah if we look here in the query so you you can see here it is performing this selecting all from here to here yeah from here to here and as well as it is running another sub query to get the data so we don't want that if we perform multiple sub queries in a single query then it will again deteriorate the performance of our application so for that what we can do is we can create a dynamic relationship okay now instead of getting the last login at and last login ip let us get the last login id yeah and using that column we'll get will define a relationship which is which will be a dynamic relationship because that column is not actually existing in the users table which, which we are creating that column on the fly so let us remove this and for here let me write last login id and we'll just get id here yeah and all the other things will remain same now if i do it like this here and just go ahead and refresh the browser we are not seeing here anything yeah because we don't have those columns here now let's see how to do that so we have this id so let me just do the same thing in the tinker well here last login id and here id yeah and you can see here we are getting the last login id now if there is an id in the users tables and we can define a belongs to relation to it yeah so what we can say is a user belongs to a last login so we can use belongs to relationship here so now if we go in the users table we can just use this and instead of has one what we can say is belongs to login class here and simply pass the second parameter as last login id here so a, a user belongs to a last login here 
using this relationship so here what we can say is even if a column doesn't exist on a table we can define a relationship for that now if we do that we can access this in the in our view here yeah so if i say view like this we'll be getting the latest login data here and that would be from this login table and we can access all this data from there so now let's say we want login at from here so here we can say logged in at yeah and similarly what we can say here is like this id here now if i refresh the page here so you can see here i am getting the same data what i got earlier so we can define it using a dynamic relationship now again you saw here we are getting this n plus one query problem here because it is running all this query here so we can again reduce that by using eager loading so if we go here and if we do here with like this then it will lazy load the relationship and if i run again so we are again only running the two queries so now using this you can see here the number of models being hydrated is only 10 here so this is much more performant than that of using the has one relationship because the number of models that were hydrated were 36 in that case yeah and the number of queries are two in both the cases but we are simply reducing the number of models that is being hydrated by the laravel now you can see here everywhere if we want the last login then we don't want to run all this code yeah so it looks a little bit bulkier now we can just hide this using some scope yeah so now if i go here in the users model we can simply define a scope here so let's say scope with last login and we're getting a query here and here we can simply just get all these things here yeah and simply just return it from here so we'll just be returning the query and add select everything will be same here yeah and whenever we are getting the with last login we always want to eager load this otherwise we will be running into n plus one query problem so we'll always add this and always the last login relationship will always be available in the users model so now if i do it like this then we can simply call with last login in our users model wherever we want the last login information So if I do it like this, so look here, it is looking much more cleaner. And if I go here in the browser and refresh the page, it's working the same way. So in this way, we can use dynamic relationship to increase the performance of our application. And also it we can use this in a situation where we only want one data from has many relationship. Yeah. So by that, what I meant is a user can have many logins. So user and logins have has many relationship and from there if we only want one data which can be either the latest one or the oldest one yeah then we can use subqueries there and use a dynamic relationship method so what we have learned here is to know how to use a dynamic relationship and also to make it much more cleaner using a scope with it so that's it for this video guys if you enjoyed this video then please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and also hit subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this thank you again have a great day bye